Well, everybody, thank you for joining us. Today we will present for about 30 minutes. Um, the content will consist of a discussion from our presenters, uh, followed by a live demo. Uh, during the webinar, we will ask you for your viewpoint when we request you to respond to some polls. We want to hear from you as well. At the end of 30 minutes, we will take questions and answers from the audience. During the webinar, if you have any technical difficulties, please send your comments uh, to us via the chat box that you probably see on one of the corners of your uh, screen, and we'll try to help out as much as possible. Uh, and that's the same spot where you will be typing in your questions. We won't be answering questions during the webinar, but we will start noting down your questions. So, well, we are delighted today to have two great panelists, and we should start the discussion with them. Coligo is the leader in enterprise SharePoint collaboration. Their award-winning unified solution suite is used by over 5,000 organizations worldwide to increase productivity, streamline collaboration, and improve compliance by delivering a consistent, secure experience across desktop and mobile devices. Their global 500 customers include Microsoft, Coca-Cola, Novartis, General Motors, and Siemens. David Whitehead is a senior sales engineer with Caligo, who's been working with SharePoint for seven years and strongly supports it as a platform for enterprise application and collaboration. He's passionate about building what customers need for the best user experience possible. David holds a degree in industrial mathematics from University of Birmingham and a diploma from British Columbia Institute of Technology. Welcome, David. It's great to have you here. Thank you, Naima. I'm looking forward to the webinar. Bitsu Mobile is a leading enterprise mobility solution provider. Their solution enhances employee productivity by allowing secure access to corporate apps and data from mobile devices while preserving rich user experience. Uh, its secure container solution creates the enterprise workspace on any mobile device, corporate owned or personal, and for all mobile platforms. Andy Smith is the Vice President of Product Management with Grids and Mobile. He is a 20-year veteran of the high-tech industry in Silicon Valley. He's also a frequent speaker on technology and security at industry events. Before joining Bitzer, Andy held senior positions at PureFresh, Bexon, ActiveCard, and Verticom. He has an MBA from Santa Clara University and bachelor's in mathematics from Occidental College. It's great to have you with us today, Andy. Welcome. Great. Thank you very much. Look forward to an exciting conversation. All right. So with that, we are ready to begin, and I'm going to hand it over to you, David, to start the discussion. Okay. Thank you, Neva. Um, so before we get going, I just want to talk a little bit about the, uh, the current state of SharePoint. So Naomi, do you want to move to the next slide? So as we know, SharePoint is, uh, has been and remains a uh, product that's much more than just uh, an intranet portal, uh, document management portal, or, or dashboarding for line of business. Um, increasingly, it's been used more by third-party products like Caligo Briefcase to build and deliver entire solutions. Um, it, the, these solutions are being referred to by Microsoft as uh, business critical SharePoint. So Microsoft recently published a white paper there called the uh, the ROI benefits of uh, a business critical SharePoint. And in this paper, they define business critical SharePoint as one that extends and automates uh, important business processes across and even beyond organizational boundaries by exposing line of business data and allowing it to be used across the organization. Um, what they found here is that by leveraging SharePoint as the platform for these business critical uh, solutions, they're able not to just save a marginal amount of data in the 10 to 20 percent range, but more by uh, saving money in a transformational layer around 80 to 90 percent. Um, what they're able to do um, by using SharePoint as the platform there, um, you get a much faster deployment. You, you have to do less custom coding. Um, and then your ongoing administration and government becomes so much uh, so much smaller. Um, so business critical solutions, they come in three different flavors. Um, 
engagement systems, mobile platform systems, and, and line of business uh, integration systems. Um, I'm just going to be talking very briefly here about the, uh, the, the middle group, so connecting the mobile workforce. Um, at Caligo, we've been focusing on providing uh, secure SharePoint op, uh, access to mobile workers for, for some time now. Um, the modern workforce is, is not tied to the standard desktop PC anymore. Uh, remote working has grown. Users now are expecting to be able to access their SharePoint content, not just um, not just on their, their work machine anymore, but there's an expectation they can access it on their laptop, their tablet, their smartphone, and whichever other device they might be using. Um, and this is driving the business critical SharePoint to become mobile driven from the outset. Um, and, and SharePoint there, it, it, SharePoint has improved the mobile experience, but you still need uh, to, to be able to use the mo a native application to provide a real uh, solution for users. Um, and that's why people are using Caligo Briefcase to develop this as a, uh, as, a, as a native app that provides offline access to their users. Now, Neymar, um, this slide, I wanted to... Uh, yeah. So as we said, we'd like to hear from you. So we're going to uh, have the first poll pull up. And please uh, let us know how you use SharePoint on your mobile device. Um, hopefully, you, one of the options apply. And if none of them, you can just check other. We'll give everybody a few seconds and, to let us know. And then we will show the results. So David and Andy, it'll be interesting what we find from our audience and how it compares to your experience. Yeah, this will be uh, good to see the results from this one. All right, so I think uh, we have, hopefully most of the audience shared their answers already, and we can pop up the results and see what that looks like. All right, so any thoughts, David or Andy? Very interesting. Yeah. Yeah, about what uh, expected. Actually, a few more using the native app uh, than I expected, but uh, uh, you know, obviously, many people not using SharePoint on mobile um, or, or doing something else, which is which is not surprising. Right? So this is still, you know, new new space where uh, trying to do things beyond email and, and getting access to intranet sites is uh, still emerging in the market, but clearly demanded by uh, corporations. Yeah, absolutely. Um, SharePoint and mobile being not allowed is an interesting uh, answer there. Um, still a fairly high percentage of users that are in that state, so we'll see if we can improve that. Okay, David, back to you. Thank you. So um, we're just going to talk through a couple of use cases here, five use cases, um, that we at Caligo have seen uh, practical use cases where Caligo briefcase is being used. The first use case we're going to look at are field service personnel. Field service personnel, we, we see these as a number of cases. Um, employees servicing medical, medical equipment in a clean room. Um, service workers working for power companies that need to be able to go and visit and read meters. Um, and, and employees working on things like relay stations in remote locations. Uh, these guys have a couple of common functional experiences. They're often truly offline. They do not have a connection to SharePoint. Um, they require access to manuals, documents, diagrams, uh, maps, and so on and so forth to, to make sure they're, they're uh, functional. And uh, they need to be able to report back their experiences to the head office. So typically things like filling out InfoPath forms, uploading photos, and so on and so forth. Again, all that needs to be done while they're offline. Freecase helps these guys by making that data is cached locally on the device. It's funny, David, uh, you, uh, the ultimate offline experience, right, maybe up there in the, uh, as an astronaut, although these guys, I bet, have uh, a better connection on that uh, spacecraft than sometimes I can get in the heart of Silicon Valley. You know, I've been at a mobility conference where uh, I'm in uh, the heart of Silicon Valley, no 3G signal, no Wi-Fi. Uh, and so, you know, as much as we like to think that it's an online world all today, uh, the reality is, uh, you know, even in the places where you'd expect to get a connection, you can't always. So offline's clearly a business critical requirement. Absolutely. And we'll see a few other use cases where we may expect to be online, but typically you're not. 
Um, the next set of guys we're going to be talking about are airline flight crew. Um, the airline flight crew, they're typically going to need access to flight manuals, operating manuals, um, corporate procedure documents, and so on and so forth. Um, for these guys, it's absolutely essential. They have the documents. In fact, it's typically regulated by the FAA. Um, so the legacy approach for these guys would be to store these documents on your DM, print them out, and provide that printed copy to, to the users. Um, keeping it digital is obviously highly preferable in this case. It reduces the cost of printing and delivery. It means that you can get updates out to them in a much more timely manner, and it makes it much easier for the end users. Again, this is typically a truly offline use case unless you're happy to build your business solution on top of something like GoGo InFlight, which uh, I wouldn't. The, uh, the next group that we're going to be talking about are um, board members and executives. Now, these guys are typically driven more by the native app experience than they would be by the offline, but for these, offline is still critical for them. They, these are high-value employees, and they need to be able to access their documents online offline without, without any fuss. So what we want to be able to do is to push this content out to those users uh, real time. Using briefcase, these employees can get that content pushed out to them and they can use, uh, in, in 3.6 release, they can use the, uh, the PDF annotation and so on and so forth directly within the application. Now for these guys, obviously, if the documents are going to be confidential, it's absolutely essential that the IT department can manage the environment securely. Um, so this is the ability to encrypt application data, delete content after failed logons, um, ensure there's no data leakage, and so on and so forth. Yeah, so this is, you know, this is exactly the use case uh, we have for some of our customers that are developing board books uh, and uh, you know, putting it on the board's personal iPads, and clearly then security is ultimate, right? This is very, very critical IP information, and uh, so they want to have all that data encrypted, make sure that they can uh, wipe the data if necessary, um, and uh, everything's going through a secure tunnel. So yeah, these, uh, these kinds of uh, use cases are, are clearly uh, important uh, security standards. Yeah. Um, the next group here, we have attorneys, and these are also very much driven by the, the, the security policies that you see uh, in the previous group. Um, for attorneys, typically, if you can secure that connection sufficiently, in theory, they should be able to connect to their SharePoint sites in the, in the courtroom. But the cost of that connection failing could be very high. You know, certainly, you could, you could definitely lose the case because you can't connect to get your data. So the easiest way to ensure these users can access their content when they're offline is to cache it locally on the device. So again, absolutely essential here that you can get that data to them and ensure that it's secure. Uh, our final use case that we want to talk about are field sales reps. So these are guys that work, for example, for a confectionery company visiting a franchise supermarket, uh, building products, working uh, and visiting regional dealerships. These guys typically need to be able to access marketing content, data sheets, brochures, videos, images, so on and so forth. There might be a large amount of data, so typically they want to be able to use search to find the right document for them. Um, and they may need to be able to save their notes back up to a central location. Again, in theory, these users may have access to the SharePoint site when they're, when they're in the field. Um, again, for this group of users, that failed connection is expensive, and it's expensive for them personally. So typically, these group of users are very demanding of offline access, and in fact, if you don't provide offline access to them, they'll go and find their own solution. So it's important to provide that capability. Again, also because this data may be large, you want to be able to control that by caching it so you don't necessarily have to be accessing it over 3 and 4G, so you have some better control over your data plan. Um, and this is actually the use case that I'm going to look at, look at in the demo. Now, Naima, we've got another poll coming up here. Yes, so you have another poll. Let us know how your organization enforces policies for mobile devices and just take a few seconds uh, to reply. Also wanted to let uh, everybody know that we will send a recorded version uh, of the webinar. Uh, we will have a link via an email that you will receive after the webinar, so you'll be able to share it or review the content again. So that would be readily available to you. So we'll just take a few seconds uh, to get the results from everyone. And I think we'll probably be ready to pop up what we have found. 
Okay, I think the results are popping up here. All right, so any thoughts, David? That's very interesting. It's a very even spread between the options there. Um, I don't know people not using policies, which is uh, it's a surprise to me. Um, I, I definitely would have thought that might be higher, but that's uh, that's good to know. Um, good good options there for uh, for Bitsa. Yeah. Andy, any thoughts? No, yeah, I'm a little a little surprised at the evenness across, but I think we'll we'll show how um, you know rather than uh, doing some device level things, you can do some app level controls for different groups of users. Um, uh, and so we'll show, we'll show that during the demonstration later. Okay, so David, if you want to take a few minutes and tell us a little bit about Caligo. Sure. So I'm going to briefly introduce Caligo here. Um, so Caligo has been in business since 2000. We've been focused on SharePoint since 2006. Our focus on SharePoint is around building apps that, uh, that help drive user adoption by making your integration with SharePoint that much simpler. Um, so we do that in using a number of different apps. Uh, the key ones that we're going to be looking at again in the, in the demo at the end of this webinar is Caligo Briefcase. Caligo Briefcase is an application that is designed to, uh, to take your content from SharePoint down onto your devices. So that could be a Windows app, um, iOS, Mac OS, Android. And it provides a, a native interface to SharePoint for those users. Along to that, we, uh, we have Caligo Administrator, which allows a, an IT team to manage what's available to the users on their devices. Um, so you have a, a central control over the experience of the end users there. Email Manager, which we're not going to be talking about in any more detail in the, uh, the webinar, is really focused around making it easy for users to take their, their uh, exchange content and upload that into SharePoint for records and collaborative purposes. Um, now, as you see, the, the, we've got a lot of customers deployed here, over 5,000 uh, customers, ranging a, a, a wide variety of different verticals, including high-tech and oil and gas and uh, natural resources, government, pharma. Um, so widely deployed, well-used, uh, mature application now. Um, now. Andy, did you want to, uh, to briefly introduce Victor? Uh, so uh, what Bitzer does is create a secure enterprise workspace on an employee's mobile device um, that's made up of a set of productivity apps and then the ability to uh, add any third-party app like Caligo Briefcase to the secure enterprise workspace. So you know, what do you get out of the box? There's a browser, uh, a, you know, basically an Outlook client, an ActiveSync client where you get your email calendar contacts tasks, a, uh, a file manager that connects with like Windows file stores and a fully fledged document editor inside, um, and then the ability to add any third party app, as we said. Um, in the red box in the center, these are the security services that are added to each of those apps. So we uh, offer authentication services. So doing integrated Windows authentication is exactly one of the things that you know many of our SharePoint customers are doing. I can do a Windows single sign on into SharePoint. Uh, we'll show that during the, the demo. Um, we do encryption of data in transit, so no need for a mobile VPN. Uh, now I've got an app level tunnel uh, to encrypt all that data in transit, encryption of all the data at rest, um, and the various data leakage and policy controls so I can decide um, you know, what kinds of information uh, I want to allow outside of the secure enterprise workspace. I try to create a kind of an isolated set of apps that are just for my business purposes that are isolated from my uh, personal apps on a device. Next slide, please. So one of the important features we talked about was containerizing any third-party app. So whether that's a web application or something built in HTML5, no problem, or whether it's a native application, I can add it to the Bitzer Secure Enterprise Workspace uh, just for my employees. Uh, and so what we're doing, that's exactly what we're doing with Coleco's briefcase, briefcase app. Um, customers receive a copy of a uh, briefcase uh, from Caligo. They import it into the Bitzer app containerization tool. They sign it with their own enterprise distribution certificate and out the other end comes a containerized app. No need to change a single line of code by Caligo or any other ISV. Um, and this is supported on iOS and Android. And what we're injecting around that app is a security layer. So we're injecting, as I said, this integrated Windows authentication to do Windows single sign-on. We're injecting our networking layer so we can do a, have an app tunnel 
that encrypts all that data in transit going between the mobile device, the app on the mobile device, and the back end. Um, and all the in key encryption management and things like that are all handled uh, uh, by the, the Bitzer uh, Enterprise Workspace. And we're injecting this ability to uh, restrict sharing uh, or leaking of documents so we can restrict open in, we can restrict the ability to email files out, copy paste. Uh, you can I can share stuff, but only within other apps in the trusted uh, workspace. So we'll, we'll demonstrate a little of that during during the demos. So the components of the system, starting left to right, clearly there's apps that run on the mobile device, iOS, Android, and soon to come out uh, Windows uh, RT stuff. Um, and uh, in the middle, those apps talk through an app tunnel uh, to a gateway server that. Uh, is typically on-prem on at a customer's deployment. That gateway server has two functions. It brokers the authentication with Active Directory, so all users are using their standard enterprise credentials to log in, and then it proxies the request to whatever backend services, whether that's other apps or mail servers, etc. And the last component on top there is there's an administrative control panel where administrators can set policies, uh, dynamically provision those over the air, they can lock and wipe um, uh, users' uh, enterprise workspaces uh, for security purposes, uh, and so that's all centrally controlled. So that's a little bit what, what Bitzer does. Uh, we're uh, deployed across uh, lots of different industries and usually kind of regulated, security-conscious uh, companies uh, that want to add this layer of security to, uh, to any app that they're going to deploy to their employees. And with that, I'll hand it back over to David, and we'll uh, do a demo of this uh, live. For the, the sake of the demo, um, we're going to be working uh, as Helen Jones, and Helen Jones is a sales rep for a company called Firestarter. Firestarter are a manufacturer of, um, of high-quality sporting goods, including mountain bikes. So she's going to be today. She's going to be visiting a company called Garibaldi Bikes. Garibaldi is a boutique mountain bike shop that branches across North America. Now Firestarter are running a promo on their uh, flamethrower range of bikes. And she's going to be presenting these bikes to the uh, the Garibaldi downhill management. Okay, so okay, so this is my iPad. Um, before I dig into using briefcase and sign in, I'm just going to highlight a couple of points here on the desktop. I've got the uh, the Bitza client, the containerized uh, briefcase application, and Adobe Reader, which is also being containerized. And you'll notice I've got uh, two other applications that I may be using here: uh, Docs to Go, Keynote. Um, these haven't been containerized, and we'll see that those apps cannot be contained, you accessed from outside the container or inside the container. So the first thing Helen's going to do is she's going to browse into a coffee shop. Uh, she goes into a coffee shop. She's going to open up her bid to enabled briefcase and sign in. So that's my uh, username and password. Andy, did you want to, uh, to comment on this process? Yeah. Um don't see it logging in, but uh, certainly as as you uh, log in, uh, you're entering your username and password, your Active Directory credentials, and um, it can be username and password. Many of our customers, as I said earlier, we're targeting uh, regulated industries or security conscious, and so there may be some form of two-factor authentication that's required. Um, and in that case, we certainly support a PKI login to Active Directory that's protected by a PIN, so that's kind of like a virtual smart card. We also uh, support the ability to have a one-time password uh, token, uh, like a secure ID token, etc. Uh, in addition to your uh, to your password. So I see David's trying to uh, get his mirroring uh, to work properly, so you guys can see the login happening. But uh, many forms of two-factor authentication um, for those people who require that for remote access, and and some of our customers do. Yeah, thanks, Andy. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what happened to my mirroring there, so let me just uh, log back in again there. So I'm going to tap the uh, the Bits application. When I when I go into briefcase, this is the uh, the Bits log on screen. I log on. I authenticate against Bits as you were saying there, Andy. And now so, in a second, I'm going to be uh, connected and being able to use Caligo briefcase. Yeah, okay. perfect. So, thanks. So example here. So uh, Helen's in the coffee shop. She's been able to connect to a public Wi-Fi. The first thing she's going to do once she's connected and got briefcase running is she's going to tap the synchronize button down in the bottom corner. The synchronize button in the bottom corner is going to be able to connect to the SharePoint site and ensure she's got all the most recent content downloaded. Um, because of the uh, the channel that Bitter is able to provide, she's able to do that synchronization 
without having to fire up an additional VPN or any additional uh, challenges along those lines. Now, before she goes in and visits the client, what she wants to do is to add a uh, group of all the documents that she wants to present into a single point of content, a, uh, a playlist or a favorites list. Um, so she's going to browse into her marketing site. She's going to go and look at the data sheets. So this is a bunch of data sheets that uh, the marketing department has provided to her. She's going to switch over to, uh, to a, a, a view here where she can see just items that are uh, relevant to this promotion. In these documents, she's going to select all of these documents and add it to her Garibaldi Bikes playlist. Now she's going to switch back over to her sales site, and in the sales site in the documents, she's going to grab a copy of the, uh, the retail price list, and again, add that to the same playlist. So what she's got now, she's got all the documents that she's going to need from various different SharePoint locations grouped together in a single playlist. Again, so make it very simple for her when she walks into the meeting to be confident she's got all her data available to her. So, happy now that she's got everything she's going to need in the meeting gathered together, she winds up, she packs her iPad away, finishes off her copy. Okay. Now, later on, when she actually walks into the meeting uh, with the clients, she doesn't have to connect to their Wi-Fi, she doesn't have to connect to, uh, to a 3G connection, um, she's got all this data offline. So she browses into the, uh, the, the, the playlist, and she's able to present all these documents to, that, uh, to the customer, including things like pinch and zoom, um, scrolling. She's able to view all the multiple different content types. I've just got PDFs and images here. This could be uh, PowerPoint presentations and so on and so forth. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a copy of the, uh, the price list, and I'm going to open it up in, uh, in Adobe Reader so I can start annotating that. You'll notice here that I've got a restricted number of applications available for me to open in. These are only the containerized applications. Andy, did you want to comment there? Yeah, just the beauty. I mean, this is really what security guys are looking for. If they don't, if you've got a policy where your employees shouldn't use Dropbox, um, without this kind of feature, basically they would be able to open up these files and anything that's available on their um, on their mobile device. Here we've restricted sharing to just a set of trusted applications uh, that, uh, that they can access in. So you just see now I've opened it in Adobe Reader, I set up another app tunnel uh, going between Adobe Reader so I'm, I've got a nice secure connection even with Adobe Reader. Uh, and so I'm able to uh, share files between trusted applications but not outside of my secure enterprise workspace. Thanks, John. Thank you, Andy. And you can see this is a, a slightly crude example. Um, she's been able to go and she's opened up this PDF document and she's annotated it in, uh, in Adobe Reader. Now from here what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to pull that back into the SharePoint site using the opening capabilities. Again, because this is containerized, um, Adobe Reader has a restricted number of applications that I can open in. So I'm going to go and open this back into my, uh, my SharePoint site and this time I'm going to upload it into one of my client document libraries. So I'm going to replace the existing file which I've used earlier. I pull the annotated document into briefcase and I, uh, and I synchronize this back up to SharePoint when I'm next online. Um, so you see there, it's really simple there for, uh, for Helen to gather all the documents into one place, annotate the documents, present them to, uh, to the clients, um, all within the uh, the application and all while offline, um, and that that's really the end of uh, the end of Helen's day. So she packs up, she leaves, she's happy. Now, Andy, did you want to uh, to comment there anything about the uh, the selective wipe capabilities that uh, Bits can provide for us? Yeah, absolutely. So you know, clearly one of the things because you know, as we said right from the get-go, one of the requirements is offline access. So I'm caching data. I've got data stored locally. That data needs to be um, encrypted on that user's device. But what happens when somebody loses their device? Uh, which obviously these are mobile devices left in a taxi at a restaurant, etc. Somebody leaves the company. Now you've got business critical data on somebody's personal iPad or on this consumer device. And so we need to be able to get that off. So uh, you know, one of the features is from the administrative control panel to send a lock or to send a wipe where immediately all that corporate uh, information can be removed without affecting any of the user's personal uh, applications or data. 
right, so I'm just securing, uh, you know, uh, business critical stuff uh, and, and not affecting the end user's, you know, consumer personal user experience on that mobile device. Awesome. Thank you. Um, Naima, did you want to, uh, to, to pull back the, uh, the slide there? Yeah, all right. Well, thank you very much for that very good demo. And uh, for the audience, uh, you can now see some resources that are available to you after the webinar if you want to get some additional information. As I said earlier, you will receive an email with a link to the recording of the webinar that you can share or review again. And we are now ready to take some questions from the audience, and we're going to start with that. So let's see the questions that are coming in. So I think the first question we got uh, was, uh, please indicate whether functionality is supported with SharePoint Online provided with Office 365 subscription. That is a question. Yeah, from a uh, from a Caligo briefcase perspective, yes, we can uh, we can connect to Office 365 sites. The experience that you get with Office 365 is effectively exactly the same, um, including here we can uh, support the ADFS uh, integrated authentication as well. Um, and then obviously communications to Office 365 can go down the uh, the, the bits of channel. Okay. And uh, another question uh, about. Caligo and Bitzer Mobile uh, supporting iOS 7, if that's available. Yeah, uh, again, uh, Caligo, we do support iOS 7. Um, we released the iOS 7 app very shortly after iOS 7 actually went public. Um, so yes, that's, uh, that's supported today. And that's the uh, same here for the Bitzer side. Uh, all of our customers, many of them have moved over to the iOS 7 version. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of new enterprise-friendly features in iOS 7 uh, that, uh, you know, we'll begin to utilize as, as those details become available, um, but allows us to uh, standardize in some of these app-level uh, controls uh, that, that iOS is not making available. So, Andy, here's a question for you. Uh, what is the typical cost for Bitster Mobile Solution? Uh, so, uh, it's typ we're typically sold on a... Um, subscription basis and uh, so it, it can range anywhere uh, between uh, it depends on the features you buy but it can range anywhere between uh, you know like 60 to uh, 120 dollars uh, per user per year uh, so it's uh, sold on a per user basis um, uh, a subscription per user basis and you can deploy it on as many devices as you'd like okay so it seems like you have a buyer on the audience because next question is uh, about the pricing model for Bitso and Caligo briefcase combined. Is it by device? So um, Caligo, we are we are licensed by, by per user here, so that's just following the uh, the Apple app model there. Um, Bitso, I guess, Andy, you just uh, you just touched on that. That's per user. Um, I don't. We don't have any bundle pricing yet, but we can certainly work to uh, to provide a, a customer with something. Okay. Next question: Can Bitzer Safari combination access SharePoint with a native look? If yes, on what devices, OS? Um, and I believe, uh, yeah, I think that's the full question. There's a Safari, right, a browser, and so that can be a browser-based access to SharePoint. Um, but uh, I think the question was getting down to a native app experience, and that's exactly what uh, Coleco Briefcase gives you. So, you know, using a browser with SharePoint, a mobile browser with SharePoint, as many of you may know, is is kind of okay, but certainly not great. <laughs> uh, and um, uh, that's why you know, things like Caligo Briefcase exist that to provide a better user experience, give you the offline capability, et cetera. Indeed. As I, as I touched on, um, SharePoint's massively improved in 2013. It's standards compliance, but still the, uh, the web pages, the web apps themselves are certainly not touch friendly. Um, when you try using SharePoint through the browser on a device, um, it's okay. Um, but there's you definitely get far superior experience using a native app. 
Okay. Uh, another question is, on iPhone devices, does mail notification work when a device is accessing the non-container side of the machine? Uh, so in the non-container side of the machine, yes, you're, so uh, non-container, you're just using your regular Apple Mail, then absolutely push works, notifications works, et cetera, for your personal stuff. What support is there for CSC government usage? I, I don't know what CSC is, but maybe Andy and David do. I guess that, uh, that comes twofold. There's um, the security uh, features, so that's where uh, bits are obviously going to be able to provide that security layer, um, encrypting data at rest, data in transit, um, and also being able to control user access uh, very effectively. Um, and then, uh, I don't know if you wanted to touch on that at all, Andy? Uh, no, no, I think they, that, yeah. uh, that covers it, certainly we did. To keep that. And then from the Caligo perspective, of course, being containerized, um, all the, the features that Bitter has been able to, to provide by securing, securing the app, um, then just naturally flow through. Okay. Um, question regarding what configuration changes are required in order to make Caligo app work with the Bitser secure container? So Caligo um, will provide a, a build of the application that is containerized by Bitsa. Um, so that was typically done by the, uh, by the client. Um, and then what's actually need to be changed on the SharePoint side is actually nothing. So we just use the standard web services there to be able to connect to SharePoint. So as long as they're available, um, then you'll be able to use uh, Caligo briefcase. And by containerizing the uh, the briefcase app, then the tunnel will pretty much ensure that you do have access to those SharePoint services. And let me ask let me let me ask this question, David. So I think the question was, did Caligo have to change anything to uh, support the containerization with Bitzer? Um, we had to remove the signing component. Um, other than that, it's exactly the same code. So yeah. we, uh, we 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 deliver an unsigned application, and then it becomes signed by Bitzer. Same code as the standard enterprise build. Okay. Uh, another question, I think it's more for David. When saving documents to a playlist, are these documents being downloaded and saved to the device or cached? How much space does this take up? Sure. Um, the, the offline capabilities of Briefcase are, are excellent, um, if I may say so. Um, so what we would typically do, by default, when you point at a SharePoint document library, we'll cache all that content from that document library. Um, so that will take as much space as it takes. Um, we have controls in place there, though. So a user may, uh, or an, app, uh, an enterprise actually, may restrict it to uh, syncing zero data or syncing 100 meg or a gig or 10 gigs worth of data onto the device. And we can refine what's actually cached based on SharePoint views and down to a granularity level of individual documents. In terms of what you're going to add to a playlist or, or the playlist favorites, um, that document doesn't actually have to be synchronized. But obviously, um, you know, if you try and access a document uh, through a playlist that isn't synchronized, you need a connection to SharePoint site to be able to download it on demand. Okay. And and it, I think this is more a question for you. Uh, you mentioned about DLP controls. How different are these from restrictions which are already imposed by Apple on company provision devices? Yeah, so uh, definitely a, a much fuller set of restrictions. So, uh, so for example, um, uh, Apple introduced newly in iOS 7 uh, this restrict open in, but you have to have uh, an MDM solution, uh, and those have to be managed apps. Um, so uh, open in um, is something that's going to be coming on uh, if you have an MDM uh, solution. But uh, we today have a, a many more uh, data leakage protection. So we can restrict the ability to email a file. Um, if you try to email it out, we can restrict the ability to copy and paste content. Uh, we can restrict the um, ability to uh, hit social share, so if your app happened to allow posting to, to Facebook or Twitter or something like that, that can be uh, uh, restricted. So there's just many more ways to, uh, to leak data out, printing for example, then Apple doesn't provide you controls around those. 
Uh, so that uh, full set of app level controls that we can inject around an existing third party app uh, is, uh, is a little more extensive than what is offered just by um, Apple today. Okay. And I think this is a topic that's of interest, so we have a follow-up question. Uh, we had an earlier question about the mail notification. Um, so the follow-up question to that is, if I'm accessing personal mail, uh, will the iPhone provide notification when a business email is received? So it's a follow-up to that, assuming that the experience is consistent across iPhone and Android devices. Um, uh, the answer is possibly. So the uh, um, what Apple, uh, if if your um, Bits or PIM client is um, active, then you can get a notification that you've received a mail. Um, but um, if you don't have that open, then it won't. And the reason being is Apple doesn't allow third-party apps to be just open in the background all the time. Um, now there's some new stuff with the multitasking, but uh, um, if you haven't opened your app, you will not receive notifications. Apple takes special uh, care that they're the only apps that are allowed to uh, be open all the time um, on your device. Okay, we have a question for David, uh, although um, Andy may want to join. Does Caligo work with two-factor authentication to a SharePoint site referring to RSA AD? Yeah, that's a, that is a good question. That, that does uh, actually is better answered there by Andy. Um, Caligo, we integrate with the standard SharePoint authentication modes. So they are uh, Windows integrated, for example, Forms, Office 365, ADFS. But, uh, but multi-factor authentication, that's where we actually allow, or we actually rely on other vendors being able to, uh, to support that for us. So uh, Bits up, yeah, do that on our behalf. Yep. So what we mentioned is so what will what will happen is the user will actually be doing a, a multi-factor authentication, including yes, we do support uh, one-time password tokens like Secure ID um, into Active Directory. And once you've authenticated into Active Directory, then uh, we're doing an integrated Windows authentication or a Windows single sign-on directly into SharePoint, which is um, you know exactly like the experience you'd be having from your desktop. And so you know, with the combination of Caligo and, and Bitzer, you get an experience that is very similar like you'd get from your uh, from a desktop app on a workstation. Okay. And just to follow up on that one there, um, we, with Caligo, typically if you're using the standard app, then when you, when you log on and access a SharePoint site, you're going to enter your credentials. Um, using the containerized app, um, you actually have passed through authentication. So once you've authenticated against Bitzer, um, the authentication against the SharePoint services is passed through by that container. Um, so you only have to sign in once. Okay. So we have only a couple more minutes before we wrap up. So quickly, uh, last questions. Uh, what does the Caligo administrator do for the Caligo briefcase? So Caligo administrator lets us uh, push out specific sites and libraries to individual users. Um, if we talk about, refer back to that uh, board use case, this is an example of where you could say um, the, the, the September meeting is about to be held. I need to push out the uh, particular document libraries for that meeting. So I can push content out to users and I can target that down to the granularity of an individual user. Um, we also have uh, the ability to apply particular controls over certain configuration settings, such as being able to limit the volume of data that might be synchronized. Um, limiting whether somebody can, in theory, be able to email the document out, uh, email a link to a document, and so on and so forth. So you might, for example, allow emailing a link to a document but disallowing out attachments. Um, so you can allow email uh, using Bitter, but using briefcase restrict it so you can only email a link instead of the actual physical document. Um, so there's two, two, two factors of the administrator. Um, the, the management of the actual content and management of the configuration. It's really about creating a, a nice day zero experience for the end user, isn't it, uh, uh, David, that I can, you know, rather than having the end user have to configure a bunch of URLs for different yeah, uh, SharePoint it, sites, it, they, they're pushed down automatically. Yeah, it, it's, day, it's day zero and, and day ongoing. Um, 
if I'm working in a in a project based world, um, if I if I'm added to a new project, um, that new project site could just magically appear in briefcase without me having to go and do anything. Um, so it's it, it day zero and ongoing. Okay, so last question I think for Andy. Um, I use an MTM uh, and have a Caligo briefcase app deployed. Can I still enforce authentication and policies to the Caligo app if I also add the Bitzer solution? Yes, uh, we have many customers that have an MDM, and they uh, uh, you know use that to protect the devices. And then on top of that, absolutely, they're using Bitzer for uh, app level controls and app level authentication. Uh, many, you know, we sit uh, very well right alongside an MDM solution. Okay, great. Well. This brings our webinar to an end, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. Uh, please take a few minutes to share your comments in a survey that we will be sending your way. Uh, again, look, you'll get the email of the link to the web webinar. Thank you so much, Andy and David. It was a great com conversation, and we appreciate your time. Thank you, everybody. All right, everybody. Thanks again, and goodbye. Yeah.